Hey friends, welcome to another weekly energy video. Welcome to October. September has finally ended. Some of you are just waking up. That was a really bad Green Day reference. <laughs> um, since it is the first full week of October, it's just the second, right? When I'm recording this, I'm, I'm doing it at the top of the week. Um, we're going to go back to our Illuminated Love Oracle. Um, at the beginning of the year, around New Year's, I pulled one card for every month of 2022. This might be a fail. Yep, that was a fail. They don't want me to show you this. If you recall, um, September's card was Savor the Completion, which was really perfect for harvest season. Uh, I went to an apple orchard yesterday and harvested some apples from the orchard and I'm just like really getting into the fall vibes here and on the northern hemisphere. It's getting chillier. I've got my house coat, my very cozy, soft, warm, pink, fluffy robe keeps me warm there we go this month we have the card magic we are the magic revealing itself and the witness at the same time childlike wonder emerges beyond historical limitations activation of magnetic state of being play as the alchemist manifesting the miracle of your life Notice magic showing up in your life. That is magic. And that is the month of October. So, yeah, it's fall, right? The season of introducing shadow. More and more shadow. We have less daylight, more nighttime. And what that means for us as humans is that we become more aware of our shadows and more aware of the thinning veil, our connection to not only our shadow aspects and how that plays a role in our life. I feel like that that translates to magic because if we're aware of ourselves, we can become aware of our, um, you know, more aware of our actions and intentions and how our thoughts and behaviors lead to certain things manifesting in our life. I feel like that's what the magic card is saying. And so for me, it does touch on responsibility for your actions, your beliefs. Um, even if you don't believe that something that happened to you has been your responsibility or has been your doing, you have to, I believe, you have to acknowledge how your energy has played a role in a situation in your life, in a relationship, in just your own self uh, motivation or, you know, how certain goals are progressing. You know, how can you take responsibility means how can you recognize your agency and be willing and open to change. So it's like an opening of a greater awareness is this magic of your true potential, your true power. Today I'm working with the Moonology deck. I love this deck. I use the Moonology book that I have right here. It helps me prepare for these weekly videos and for the full and new moon videos. It's very helpful. And then I have also the first edition of the Northern Animal Tarot it's an artist deck uh, made in Canada. So, yeah, let's get into our messages for this week. Show me what's good. Um, if you're here and you watch these videos weekly, I know there's not very many of you, but I just want to say I appreciate every single person who 
watches these and gives me good feedback, keeps me <laughs> honestly happy and motivated. Um, I know we shouldn't live for validation, but when we're doing spiritual work, it's not uncommon to ask for um, guidance or a sign that um, the energy we put out into the world is coming back to us and it sort of keeps us going in a momentum and towards a trajectory trajectory and maybe because it is october in the northern hemisphere that i'm picking up some card reading gigs so i mentioned one earlier it's on the 27th in highland park if you're in the chicagoland area that's great come through um and then there might be another one on the 29th which is a saturday that weekend of halloween weekend and then i'll be going to sedona for another retreat if you remember back in march I mentioned I was going on this first retreat. My friend Anna Crystal hosts amazing retreats. I'm so lucky that I get to go um, and be a part of that. So I haven't figured out, I'm leaving myself again open and aware of uh, my processes and I'm not making any promises because I'm open to things changing. I don't know if I'll be doing weekly videos this month. I want to, it's my intention to keep making videos, but just, because of my schedule, I don't know how that will occur. So thank you for being along for the ride. Thank you for the love. Let's get into it. Here we go. We have new moon in Capricorn. Your hard work is paying off. New moon in Sag, luck is on your side, and the full moon in Cancer, a personal issue reaches resolution. So we have two times new moon energy, finishing with the full moon in Cancer. Now the new moon in Capricorn and the full moon in Cancer happen around the same time each year. This is actually referencing Capricorn season, the new year. The new moon in Capricorn is the new moon that we have when we're doing our New Year's resolutions. New Year resolution energy. Maybe this is sort of flinging us into the future a little bit. Uh, but this, uh, you know, these weekly energy videos are for the purpose of being aware of the energy that's available to us. When we do manifestation work, right? I don't know that we're always just trying to be like, I want this now. Um, it's an intention, it's an energy, it's a feeling that we put out and then we let it go and just go with the flow and see what happens. But we hold on to um, the things that we believe are going to get us that. It's a frequency and um, a vibration that allows things to come in, not on your terms, but on the greater scope of everything that is happening in this world, in this three-dimensional space. The universe works to align those things for you. So it seems like this week there's maybe really good energy, uh, potential energy for manifesting something by the end of the year. It says luck is on your side. Again, becoming aware. Luck is preparedness. Becoming aware of all the things that you have at your disposal right now within yourself, everything that is already within you that has magic to propel you forward to reach your goals, to a personal issue reaches resolution. Maybe this is for somebody who has been doing a lot of inner work or has been struggling in a relationship of some sort, um, or maybe not even a specific relationship, but um, has been doing work to better relate to others. So this could be in a, in a work situation or just a friend group situation, maybe there's been enough personal work done where like now it's hard to relate to other people. I sense that there is um, new people coming in. Okay, there's new, well, let's see if this is confirmed. Um, but I have a sense, there, this is a message that comes up for me often and maybe it's because this is something that is in my life as well as sh shifting social circles. And even if it's not people leaving or new people coming into your life, there's a difference in relating because you have changed. You have done hard work. Whew. 
How are you magic? Um, it's the end of Mercury retrograde. Alleluia. So maybe we have more awareness, more... Um, the things that have been stagnant may start to move forward. There's been a realignment, hopefully. We're sinking into the deeper meaning of things, understanding ourselves on a whole nother level. All right, underneath the energy of the reading, quarter moon. I believe this is the moon we have right now, is it not? Um, at the top of this week, uh, October 2nd through the... Uh, 8th, 9th, 8th, 5 of Pentacles, the Hanged Beast, the, in this deck it's the Hanged Beast, but also known as the Hanged One, also known as the Luminous Prince, and Temperance. So there's a lot of energy here about feeling stuck. We've been feeling uh, left out in the cold, like we don't have what it takes. This week is a reminder that we do have what it takes. We just simply had to let go, let go of outcome and be open. Sag Temperance is Sagittarius and we have the Newman and Sag here. Four of Pentacles. See, we've been we were going backwards. We were hold to move forward. We could not do things the way we used to do them. I think we've been holding on to uh, something that is valuable, something that is worthwhile but has been limiting has been limiting what did this card say here we go a childlike wonder emerges beyond historical limitations that's here then we got the queen and king of pentacles showing up one after the other this is a power couple see there is somebody coming i, th I had this feeling this is a power couple. This is definitely in the 3D. This is definitely somebody, uh, a partnership of some kind that is um, very powerful, very rooted into reality. So somebody that you may either work with or interact with regularly on the physical plane. This is not like twin flames and separation sort of uh, reading. But it looks as though like you're building something valuable with this person Queen and King of Pentacles, but you see how they're not facing each other? So I think that the um, work and the energy of this week is potentially to recognize that your divine counterpart is on its way. If we can settle our minds, our bodies, be at ease with, you know, thinking about will my needs be met because that's this five of pentacles energy the five of pentacles reminds us that we're not alone everyone wants to come in out of the cold everyone's working really hard to achieve the things that they want and desire but the things that you want are also the things that this other person wants too and they might show you another way um, i think maybe together there can be um, better better, faster, I don't know. Um, nope, I'm not going to go there. Let's, let's keep going. The Nine of Wands, the Six of Cups, and the Three of Cups. Six of Cups, both the Six of Cups and the King of Pentacles have been showing up for me um, in other ways. So it's interesting to see them here because the way you learn tarot is speaking to cards and you know for me it's like having a conversation of sorts and then you start to bring your own meanings your own lived experience into how the cards show up for you right and so for me this is really saying that this is overcoming something about how things have been done this is really really saying to me and, and returning back to this like idea of doing inner work and personal work, communication needs to happen. 
in terms of how you've been changing the things that are no longer in your purview, as in these are no longer things that I want. We have to let go of our past selves with love in order to step into the future. So that's why there's harmony and celebration here. Understanding our true power is a quiet thing. There needs to be balance in how we go after the things that we want in our life. And this is for me really saying loudly, the inner work, the inner magic is really powerful at the moment. I think there's a question here in the past about what you deserve based on how you behaved in the past. Though that is a difficult thing to, I don't know what you've done. I don't know what anyone here has done. This is just the energy. But in general, I think it's, it can be a difficult thing to, um, when thinking about the past, to feel, I don't know, unhappy with how we've behaved. So this is what's being overcome. And I think it's, it's being overcome by realizing that you have like a personal power, this magic, whatever this magic is, to offer yourself balance and harmony, um, to make yourself whole within yourself. This is really about taking care of yourself on a physical level, taking care of your body, uh, making sure that your, your house and your home are well taken care of, you're well nourished. It's like, get your basic needs met. That's all we want. And you know, that can be very powerful. That is such a powerful thing to give yourself that and then also be at the same time in an intention and the power for calling the future in to you. Manifestation is not about flinging yourself into the future. It's about bringing things closer to yourself. You become magnetic. That's what this month is about, is becoming magnetic to the things that you want. Admitting to yourself that the things you used to want, you no longer want, and you want this other thing. That's cool. Uh, in the future, I do see an invitation to be a little patient and just be open with your awareness of where your personal power comes from. This might be one of those things where if you don't see it, because I see here that, that these, these, the Queen and King of Pentacles, their backs are towards each other. It's sort of saying like to see your personal power and how you have agency in your life comes from, or must begin with taking care of yourself first. And then it, it's almost like, you, so you don't see it, right? But other people do. Other people will see how you take care of yourself. And then the universe starts taking care of you in that same way. It's powerful shit. The energy of the quarter moon. This is about gratitude. Just be happy for every single thing in your life at this moment. That is a life changer. To be able to tap into that perspective no matter what's going on. No matter if you feel like you've been left out in the cold or that the current establishments or the current established beliefs, the currently established patterns, habits are keeping you stuck or behind or in the past. Don't discredit the work that's been going on because hard work is, is paying off. That's what the new moon in Capricorn is saying. You don't have to wait for New Year's Eve to change something about your life, about how you... Uh, what you believe, how you think. It's about recognizing you are a very important part, but also just one part of the co-creation of your life with the universe. We are in this very awesome, very unique place. And we're all here together. We're all in the human experience. Unless you're not, unless my videos are reaching further than I could have imagined. Into space. <laughs> That's what I got. Let's just get one more card just to see what inspiration comes from that. Any final messages? 
the Seven of Cups. Yep, the world is your oyster. You can go anywhere that you choose. Recognize that amount of responsibility. Right? You can have anything. What are you going to put your energy and focus into? What are you going to put your energy and focus into? This is dreamy. This is dreamy, but also we're very grounded here with the Queen and King of Pentacles. Uh, bridge that gap. Bridge that gap between feeling and then trusting. It's feeling, trusting, and then I guess expecting. Expecting that things will work out the way that you want. I don't know if I like that. I don't know. I don't know if I, I like that last thing that I said. Um, because we're taught to release expectations in manifestation. So, uh, but, you know, it's what came out. So do with it what you will. Thank you so much for being here. I really, truly appreciate it. Uh, next will be the full moon in Aries coming up. I believe that's on the 9th. Yeah, that's the ninth. Aries rules the first house, so we're going to get into our identity, uh, ego, how we take action, and all that. All right, there's a recommended listening video in the description below. And I almost forgot, if you want to go on retreat with me and with Anna Crystal and a bunch of other amazing people in Sedona, I think there's still a couple spots left. Um, I'll put the link below so that uh, if, if it's calling to you, speaking to you um, in any way, the dates are October 16th through the 20th or the 21st. Uh, go onto that link, fill out the form, and I will call you, uh, she'll speak to you, um, and then just take it from there. Um, it's an incredible experience and definitely one that I would recommend to anybody who's doing, like this reading suggests, uh, deep inner work to discover uh, personal power and also to acknowledge and become friends with your intuition, um, becoming whole by acknowledging your shadow self as well as your luminous self. So I'll end on that note and thank you all again for watching. I'll see you on the next video.